Uh, I'd like to uh, open the meeting at 7.04 p.m. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And like I said, good evening, everyone. Uh, first thing we're going to go to is department updates. Chief Trezino, you're on deck, sir. Good evening, everybody. Ren Fair is done for the season. Uh, right now, we're in the high season for foliage viewers and apple pickers. So that traffic that you're seeing out there, that's everybody coming up to enjoy the beautiful mountains in the fall time. So um, we do want to remind everybody, make sure that you follow the posted speed limits, uh, follow the traffic control devices, drive courteously. Police do take notice. Um, right now, we're in the process of acquiring new technologies, specifically a uh, townwide camera and uh, license plate reader reading system to augment public safety. Uh, that That's really going to propel us quite a bit into the future with law enforcement technologies. Uh, very excited about it. That's all for now. Thank you, Chief. Uh, anything for recreation, Rick? Uh, yeah, Kathleen is unable to make it tonight. Uh, she gave me a list of things. <clears throat> So uh, the basketball is still ongoing at Circle Field toward, uh, to the end of the month. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Coach McKenna last night. Uh, he donated a pizza party for the kids. They were very appreciative of it. Uh, it was a great turnout. The kids have really been showing up for the program. They're really excited about it. Uh, Trunk or Treat is this Saturday, Powerhouse Park from 3 to 5. We still need uh, trunks. So if you're interested in coming to Trunk or Treat and having your car there and handing out candy, please reach out to Kathleen here at the town hall. Uh, the paint party was a huge success. That was at the train station. Um, she's planning on having another one with a Christmas theme, and it's uh, scheduled for December 5th at 7 p.m. Uh, information about the turkey trot will be posted on Monday. The walking club will now meet at Powerhouse Park on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Senior game day starts uh, Monday at 1 p.m. at the train station. Chair yoga is continuing through the middle of November at the train station on Tuesdays at 1.45. Turnout has been great. Well, good stuff. Thank you, Rick. Marissa? I'll Okay. Uh, public comments and agenda items. Any takers in the room? I see your hand going, but go ahead, Maria. Just one thing I should probably just tell you something. You guys know. So you guys know I'm not a complainer, usually. But um, there has been a problem with signs this year. Um, uh, the sign, political signs. And political signs are protected speech. And the signs that were placed, you know, on the train station for some time taken, several times taken. I so badly that I had to call the police. And you know, I've lived in Tuxedo for 17 years. And I I always feel like this town has been a town that accepts people how they are. And you know, I have neighbors that belong to different political parties. I work with people who are different political parties. And I think that respect is important. And that's important not to take the signs of people you don't agree with off of the train station. Um, I mean, they've been taken from everywhere, from the train station, from Route 17, from the, the, from the area between Route 17 and Route 17. And, and uh, that's not fair because the other, the, other, the other side hasn't been doing that um, to, to the people who are taking them. So I'm, I know that we have a rule in our in our code not to put signs until 45 days before an election and you know we always uh hold to that but i you know i think that we need to be respectful i did speak to the police about it and they said that they were going to start and then since then they haven't been taken but that's a shame <laughs> yeah uh maria i could uh test this one thing the state highway was down and they did the cutting yes and I, yeah, they I, I, mulched 
uh, several uh, several signs. Yeah. So much so it made a huge mess on 17A and the intersection by the light. We called both, them. We we made a complaint against that. Right. They had the the people come back and clean it up because it was an absolute disaster by the pollination meadow and everything else. So. I can't talk for the train station, but I know we did recognize that the political signs on 17A and by the right. uh, pollination right. were done by the mowers. Yes. And <laughs> they did come back and clean that. Yep. Sushair was there when it happened. But yeah. so, but the they ones didn't. in the train station There's still debris in there. were taken. There's still signs cut up in there? There's still shreds. Oh. Well, okay. they, they came back later that day and picked up big pieces. So there may still be a little, I mean. Yesterday, we were Bob Brady, our building inspector, witnessed it, and he came right away and called, and we had Lisa Decker called right up there. Steve. Sir, if I could just address that issue. If anybody sees anyone of any, I don't care, I don't think anybody cares what political party it is, uh, that's a criminal matter. Yeah. And it, it isn't just Tuxedo, it's surrounding neighborhoods as well, what just so you know. It, it's a, uh, no, what's it's that, a, sir? It, it, oh, it's a political it's a state, oh. it's, uh, Yeah, theft of political signs is yeah. an unclassified misdemeanor under the election law. So that that is in our wheelhouse. If you have any information, we will absolutely act upon it. If you see anything you know suspicious, please let us know. But again, just to let you know, it, it is happening everywhere. So yeah, we, I, we yeah, are I mean, looking I think out. We've all been victims of it. I mean, I lost so many signs over the past years. <laughs> just this past cycle, we lost a lot. I'm sure you did too. They don't, I, I don't know what the motivation is, but certainly you know, it's a horrible situation when you have to resort to that level, right? I mean, like those signs. I mean, I really don't care for the signs anyway, right? But I agree with the First Amendment and the right to post them. But, you know, in this particular case right here, if you're working with the chief and he's aware of it, then we support any initiative that we can get behind to stop that particular problem. Thank you. Anybody Do you guys else? have a question? Oh, Jerry. Where do I begin? Let me get my well, remember, this is, this is going to be about agenda items. I know. Okay. Um, with Kathleen's report, um, the tree lighting is December 5th, and the paint party. October 7th. Paint party is December 5th at 7 p.m., yes. Yep. And the train, lighting and train station is December 5th? Uh, she... I think that's what she told us last meeting. Unless that's what she's meaning by Christmas themed. I don't know. She, I can only answer for what's on this sheet. We'll fo I'll follow up with that tomorrow. Okay. Well, she That's said the December fifth okay. when she was here the last time. But okay. That's she, why we she probably just spoke then, so I'm looking at the calendar Friday the sixth. So that means yeah. Well, I'm just you know. Yes, yeah, the sixth. I'll make sure she has the right date. Because we'll be in Southern Florida. <laughs> Jerry, speaking of that, are we going to decorate the train station this year? Yes. Okay. Is there anything we need to do for that? Is supply wise, or you have all the clips? I know that was an issue in the past. Oh, we get clips. We got clips and whatever. You don't need any assistance from Rob, ladders, or? Well, the only thing we need from Rob is he puts the um, ornament on top of the bus stop. Fire. Oh, over there. On top, of, on top of the P. Okay. And, and also the lights that go over top of the P. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna talk to Rob about that, or you uh -huh. want us to? Okay, all right. Oh, so the the some of the folks in the uh, Parks and Recreation and Advisory Board said they would volunteer. Oh, I already nice. volunteered, and others said that they would volunteer to help you. So that's just for two of you. Three of us. What else, Jerry? That's it. Okay, now, thank you. Yeah. That was easy. Is there um, about electricity at the bus stop, so we can do the lights over. Well, I've spoken to Rob for several years about putting electricity on the outside of the bus stop. I thought there was a heater in there. Isn't there electric already in there? The electric's in there, but people go in and pull the plug. Okay. 
Um, All right, we'll look into that too. That makes it a lot easier if you have an outlet there. Yeah, on the outside, because if you have it on your eaves, then it's harder to reach. Okay. You need a ladder or something. Makes sense. Oh, okay. Makes okay. sense. Thank you, Jerry. Sue. You're welcome. So that was it. To share, um, also talking about signs, but differently. Um, I think the code about the number of days before elections that signs could go up was created before we had early voting. Yeah. So, yeah. so that that kind of does the, the the number of days before it doesn't match if if we're voting like by October twenty sixth. It would seem to me that the, we need to look at the code and mm -hmm. state it as different from X number of days before election or X number of days before the first voting. I always assumed it was October 1st, no matter what. Uh, that seems to be the standard agreement, but if there's code wrapped around it, that's news to me locally, so we can definitely take a look at that. Yeah. Five days before the election. Yeah. So we're currently going through some stuff with the town code um, that I'm working on with the building department, so we can take a look at that. Okay. Uh, out, uh, Evelyn, I see you have your hand up. Evelyn? Um, Jerry, can we have our meeting and take that off? Line? Evelyn, I guess one more time. Um, is she not on mute? Is she? Are we? Uh, she is. I mean, are we forcing it? Okay. All right. We'll come back to Evelyn. Any more comments in the room about agenda items? Okay. We're going to proceed. Uh, we're going to open the public hearing here for introductory local law. So uh, I'd like to make a motion at 716 uh, to open the public hearing on introductory local law. Uh, local law amending local law number five of 2022. Wow, like I said, 7 16 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Mitch uh, Newman and his Lenar team to come up and give us an overview of what's uh, contained within this particular uh, amendment. So you have the floor, sir. Okay, thank you, everybody. And as you said, uh, Mitch Newman. I'm a vice president of land with the North New Jersey, New York division, and we, <clears throat> excuse me, appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, what you have before you is a request to amend the special permit that was adopted in 2022. Mm -hmm. And um, what we have are a couple of presentation boards and, and another overall board uh, that shows it from an aerial view. There's a lot of numbers in the request for the amendment. Uh, my preference is to talk about this in the context of a story, if you don't mind, to tell you what are we doing, how did we get there, and where do we want to go. And then if there's any detailed questions, oh, there you are. Uh, Ashley is our planner, and she is instrumental in drafting everything involving the special permit. So she'll be there to, to clean up or, or answer any details. But let's start with, so, so what are we doing? So this, is, this plan currently shows what's in the existing special permit. Um, and it sets up the different uh, communities and the different number of homes in each community. But the special permit requires us to add 30 more single family homes. So we've had that in our mind as we've been going through the initial approvals. Because if you recall, we have approvals so far for West Terrace, uh, for North Ridge, for Upland Park, for the Commons. And we started thinking we better get ahead of this extra 30 family homes uh, before we run out of sections that we've gotten approved for. And then when we started looking at where we're going to put those 30 single family homes, uh, we started to also focus on East Terrace, which is here at the bottom of the map and, and the bottom of the original map is yellow, and realized that East Terrace, to be blunt, wasn't working. The grades were not supporting the exact type of homes that were designed in, these, in that initial concept plan. So we said, all right, we now got to find 30 extra single family homes. We got to plan East Terrace. And in doing that, and I'll get into the details in a second, in doing that, we wound up with, uh, we were losing homes. So we said, okay, now we've got to figure out where we're going to pick up the extra homes. And the, the 
most likely place to do that was in the age restricted section. And I'll explain why in a minute. So we had a puzzle and we had, we started with that, um, that level of thinking and the puzzle led us to the special permit amendment that you have in front of you. So let's walk through a little bit of the numbers. So we had to find 30 single family homes. So we started with uh, looking at Winding Hill, which is right here in the middle and kind of purple, and right here in the middle, kind of purple. And if, if you look and you can see, well, Winding Hill was 40 single family homes and 45 townhomes, a total of 85. 40 singles, 45 townhomes. What we did is we converted the 45 townhomes into 20 singles. So Winding Hill now is, of course, a total of 60 singles. So got rid of the townhomes, now it's 60 single family homes, which means we went from 85 to 60, so we're down 25 if, if you're keeping score. But good news is now we've eaten 20 of the 30 single family homes that we need. So we still gotta find 10 singles, we still have to figure out how we're gonna make East Terrace work. So East Terrace uh, in its original or current configuration is 174 24 foot wide townhomes, 33 28 foot wide townhomes, and 196 condos, or what we call stack townhomes. So we have 401 in East Terrace. It wasn't working. We still need to find 10 more single family homes. So what we're planning for East Terrace, and that has this has not come before the planning board, we're still in design stages. For East Terrace, we're going to drop the 24 foot wide townhomes from 172 to 123. We're gonna drop the 28 foot wide townhomes from, it's right, from 33 down to 30, big difference. And we're dropping the stack townhomes from 196 to 178 and adding the 10 single family homes. And that plats out just fine. But the net net result is now we've gone from 401 to 341 so now we're down 61. So we said we were down 25 in Winding Hill. We're down 61 in East Terrace, but they both work and we found our 30 single family homes. So now where are we gonna make up that difference, which is uh, 86 if my math is holding true. So the place where we figured we could make it up is the age restricted section. And you might say to yourself, well, geez, I'm looking at it. The road network doesn't look too different. How did you make it up? And I'll go through the math in a minute, but we made it up by implementing these 12 unit, or I call them 12 plex condo buildings. And that's not in the original plan. You don't see these 12 plex condo buildings, but the special permit has those buildings baked into it. We just hadn't implemented them anywhere. So now we realized and, and those 12 plex condos want to be age restricted. Uh, it's a one car garage. It's a four story building. Uh, it has interior hallways. So it's quite secure. You come in, you lock your garage, your storage closet, you walk up to your home, you lock the door. So it, it wants to be an age restricted element. So that gave us the ability to increase the density in the age restricted community by now using that home type that was already baked into the special permit. The original special permit. So by the numbers, the single family age restricted homes went from 114 to 142. The duplexes went from 174 to 112. And the condominiums went, of course, from zero to 120, which means there's 10 buildings, 10 12 plexes, so there's 120. When you put all that math together, our unit count does not change. It remains at 1609 and our bedroom count did not change. So big picture, there's no change in the, in the most important elements, unit count and bedroom count. Uh, the road network is primarily the same. And as I said, in, in my vernacular, we moved some of the chess pieces around because we had to start with <coughs> how to make up those singles that the special permit required us to. And that just rolled into these changes. And when we talked to, to our planner and our attorney, and said, so, okay, do we have to do anything? Or do we now just come to the planning board for these next sections? Uh, Brad and Ashley said, no, these rise to items that do require a change in the special permit because the special permit had various limitations 
on some of these elements. So that's the story of how we got there and why we're seeking relief from the board for this amendment to the special permit. And, and of course, as I said, Ashley can go through any of the uh, minutiae or the details um, that resulted in the drafting to get us here. And the market studies are showing, I think we heard that, um, I, I like the term active adult because yeah. I'm there now and I don't like senior <laughs> citizens. I, I hear you. But, uh, <laughs> I've been there for a few years. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, from my interpretation of being involved in the special permit for years and years and years, this fits right in the master plan. I mean, this is actually an accent to it, and it actually parlays into your studies uh, yeah. for marketing. So, hundred percent. We, we actually, and this isn't very scientific. We get calls and, and emails and inquiries, and so many of them are focused on the A district exception. Folks want to downsize. They or they, they just want to find a new opportunity in, in, in a common age group. Uh, and the age restricted section will have its own clubhouse, um, uh, pickleball court, dog park, and, and a couple other features. So they, they want that lifestyle. But they also, mo and this is what's most telling is, and this is what we, is what we think is really going to drive this community. When the age restricted folks, okay, when I move in there, when people my age move in there, in my head, I'm, like, I'm so old. <laughs> Something's going wrong. But when those folks move in there, you know what's going to happen. Their sons and daughters are going to move in here because they want that natural daycare system mm -hmm. of, of taking care of the kids. So that's why we see is it's just such an incredible compliment to have an age-restricted section right next to a family section. So, uh, so we're really comfortable that this will work, and we're really excited about adding in the, as I call them, the 12 plex condos because it also facilitates those snowbirds that um, may, although there's lots of things to do here in the winter, they might just want to be in South Carolina or Florida, right? knowing they just lock their door and they have a safe and secure home that they can leave. Right. And I know when you introduced the 12 Plex, which I think was this summer, right? Um, yes. yes. Yeah, we actually have the plans. We Rick and I have them hanging on the wall in there. I don't know if you guys have any depictions. No, I didn't bring architecture. Very, ones. very, very beautiful. Uh, yeah, we, we sold out of them at a community in uh, Morris Plains in, in North Jersey. We called it Venue at American. And uh, we were, it was the first time we tried them and uh, they were really popular. We weren't actually sure what was going to happen because typically the age restricted buyer is single family. We've had success with our duplexes, but uh, it was a whole revelation for us that, that the, the condo is making a comeback. In and, uh, but they're not small. It's, I want to no, say, 2,100 square feet, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, over 2,000 right? square yeah. feet. And yeah. uh, there, nice. there are two bedrooms and a study. So it's quite large, which also scared us that we were overselling the market. And it turned out that we were right where we needed to be. Sometimes Perfect. you're lucky or you're smart. It could go either way. Any questions from the town board before we go to the public? I have two questions, not necessarily, I suppose, related to this, but I would like to ask them. What, what's the total percentage of the bedroom count in the active adult community versus uh, the totality? Yeah, I'd have to ask Ashley. She has all those details. We have those details. Just give me a second. And then. Here's your percentage of what it is. Yeah, rough. Well, I'm I can not give looking you the for numbers. exact. We have the numbers. numbers. I'll give you the percentage oh, translated. Yeah, we'll do some quick math. So then, we have. Um, there's a total of 3,620 bedrooms in the entire development. And of that, 2,872 are unrestricted. So those are open to anyone. Okay, so it's about 800, roughly, of the 3,600. Right, about okay. 30. Um, and then I'll ask a question I know I get asked a lot. A rough idea of when you guys anticipate breaking ground. Yeah, we ask that of ourselves all the time. We actually had an all-day tuxedo meeting. I got to leave early because I have to wrap up here, so I was thankful for that. Um, so, so what in terms of I'm going to talk about the community in general, not the age restricted section. Yeah, just in general, like when you yeah. break ground on the first phase of whatever it is. You so we brought, we've already broken ground in West Terrace, which is, you can't see from the street. Of course, you have to drive up there. Uh, the idea is that we're going to hopefully have building permits in West Terrace, let's say in the next 30 days or so, okay. which triggers different monetary obligations that we're trying to get ahead of. So 
building permits in West Terrace, let's say this fall, and then we start home construction early 2025, and then we deliver homes for closings late summer 2025. Okay. So nice. our first deliveries will happen okay. summer of 2025 in West Terrace, and then we will just keep rolling. And part of that process is we need to secure the New Jersey Attorney General uh, registration process. Might not be using the right words. Uh, so we should be submitting for that probably late November so that we can officially go over to sales in the spring. You mean New York? New York. New York. Did I say New Jersey? I, I, I know what you mean. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I wasn't sure that they had some kind of rule that. Yeah. Unfortunately. No, nah, there's there's a thing, but we're, we're only yeah, no, we're we're gonna focus on the New York attorney. Did I say New Jersey Attorney General? Well, you're close, so I get it. Yeah, it's right right down. Word that I was off. Okay. And then just sort of uh, to piggyback on that, is the anticipation it's going to be one neighborhood at a time, or is it going to be a multi-phase? No, 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 no. It, it, if we're doing our job, it's it's one at a time to start, or it's the first one to start. But then we roll into Upland Park, and so you'll do build the four concrete path. in West Terrace, and then roll that into the next thing, and then yeah, we'll start framing here and roll it into the next, yes. and that's the. We always want to keep a diversity of housing uh, types available for the public, and West Terrace only has I think thirty-one singles. So if, if we have a little window to back, that's going to go fast. So we're focused on moving it to Upland Park, but then right behind it. We still need to submit to you all for Mountain Lake. Um, I, did, did, yeah, we didn't go. We didn't. Uh, okay, no, so we still have to go for Mountain Lake, which is another twenty-four singles. Um, but we're going to run out of singles relatively quickly, and then you'll see us coming in to Rhine and Hill and the Bluffs. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be single family is going to be the front end of the project. Then it'll roll singles in and townhomes in West Terrace. Okay, and then we'll roll into Upland, which is a mix of towns and stack townhomes. Okay, and then. We haven't decided yet whether we're at Mount Lake, one on the hill. They just said today that they want to start breaking ground in uh, North Ridge next, which is 32 foot wide townhomes. So it's townhomes that are a little bigger that also coincidentally have bedrooms on the first floor for some of them. So North Ridge is kind of be, going to be family housing, but also might be age targeted for those folks that don't either don't want to wait for the age restricted section or they say, I don't want to live in that, to live in a community. I still want to be in a family style housing situation. Uh, so there's the, the tuxedo has lots of possibilities for us. We love it. Um, and sometimes we get stuck in the mud on where to go next. So most important, start. So that's where you start. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you. And you're welcome to anybody. Whenever we're here, you're welcome, you're welcome to re ask that question and I'll have more information next time. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. In, uh, in this change of mix, do you anticipate more or fewer school-aged children? It's an interesting question. If you, if you ask Ashley this and she went by the numbers, there will technically be projected to be less school children because there'll be more age-restricted homes. While that's, that's what the, the stats tell us, uh, we are hopeful that the additional age-restricted homes are going to facilitate more families wanting to move in here. So when you might have had a single or a young couple with no kids, I think by having more age-restricted homes, you're going to inspire more people to move in here with kids and school-age kids. And they're gonna want that method of the, the kid, the school ends, I don't know when school ends, at 2.30, 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the adults are still at work. Well. Grandma and grandpa are going to run over to the school system and pick them up and meet them at the bus stop, and it's going to create one one heck of a great place to call home. Okay. Have you guys done any projections on the number of school age kids that you anticipate? Yeah, there are formulas that we always use, and, and Ashley ran all those numbers that's in the special permit. And as I said, it does show that there is a marginal reduction in the prediction of school age children, um, but those are predictions. Can, can no, I understand. I'm just kind of curious what you want to. So, so using the same methodology that we used back in 2022, um, in 2022, we were estimating 404 school-age children. We 
you're now estimating 354 school-age children. We'll know more when we start and start bringing them in. Okay. And where are they going to go to school? Where are they going to school? Mm -hmm. The Tuxedo School District. Have you guys been talking to them about any y progress? Yeah, yeah, I've met with Jeff um, at least a couple times. And, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 our conversations are hurry up. So that, that's what that's his side of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hurry up. We, we can't wait for your school kids. Uh, my side of the conversation is to help him sell it. And uh, he's working on coming up with, I'll call, um, I guess this is the right way to say it, a sales pitch on why Tuxedo is a great place to go to school. And in my way of looking at it, one of the things that makes it so dynamic and different from every place else is the teacher to student ratio is really low, which is, you know, Jeff might say, well, that's what I'm trying to fix. I'm trying to get more students. But from our perspective, it makes it so unique that we can tell our potential homeowners, where else are you going to get this really low one-on-one -on -one student teacher ratio and give your kids the best opportunity for a great education? So the, the negative is actually, from our perspective, a positive. But yeah, yeah, we will continue. I just, I, I haven't heard a lot of positive feedback from people on the school board uh -huh. about this interaction. Uh -huh. And I'm hesitant to make any changes without a full understanding of the, what the stakeholders, I mean, they're pretty significant stakeholders and they have the highest tax rate for everybody in the town. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to see what their opinion is on, on these types of changes as well. Well, and I hope that their, their opinion would be that the most important thing we can do is get started and this is facilitating us moving ahead. So that's a good point. One, you mentioned financial triggers when you guys have the first building permit, isn't one of those a significant payment to the school district? Absolutely. Over a million two, dollars? Two triggers at the first building permit. One is um, squaring up with the Tuxedo um, um, Land Development Corporation. So there's a payment due of, of uh, three or $400,000. The second uh, square up is on the um, school district. 50% of the 2.5 million is due at the first building permit. The other 50% is due a year later. So we will soon be writing a check to the school for $1.25 million. Okay. So okay. that's got to help. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Do, you. do you guys have any type of construction schedule in creating? Yeah, 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 we certainly have an internal master schedule of, of how we're going to time out for the community. There's a lot of projections in there. Um, and we probably yeah. typically would share that with the building department simply because they want us to make sure they're staffed up and ready for us. So we've been doing that through uh, Deborah's department. Okay. Yeah, that's probably... Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So Sarah. the product mix that's changing, what does it do to the... Does it affect the tax revenue? Um, I, I, you ran through that? Um, yeah. So we didn't do the same level of detail of analysis that we did back in 2022. Mm -hmm. We are anticipating... Um, that because the un total unit count remains the same, that it will be very similar, and that the costs um, would be exceeded by the, the uh, proposed tax revenue or the anticipated tax revenue. The revenue would exceed the cost. The revenue right. would exceed the cost. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you said that horribly backwards. <laughs> <laughs> revenue will exceed Re the cost. Revenue would exceed the cost. I'm, I apologize. Right. So, so the dollars that you had in the original 2022 special permit, sounds like you're saying, should be relatively similar. They should be relatively similar. We were, <laughs> we were well above the anticipated costs in 2022, and we have the same total number of units, and we have more, um, right. more age-restricted, which are generally more tax-positive because there are no school kids. Correct. So it's possible that if we did ask Ashley to rerun the numbers, it would be more fiscally positive, but we wanted to stay conservative and say, okay, it was fiscally positive in this plan, it'll at least be as equally positive in our other one. So I think we're in good shape there. Okay. Rick, go. We did do a sensitivity analysis back in 2022 <coughs> to account for some modest changes in the, in the layout and the tax uh, rate. So I think we're well within our sensitivity analysis. Okay, let's open it to the public. Any comments <clears throat> on this issue here in the room? Maria. 
the chatterbox today. No, I just I I think that the the I know that originally the our town board uh, was was uh, looking at this uh, development, and we wanted more single family homes because that is what brings you know uh, kids, and also you know a lot of people prefer that. So I was happy to see that that was the case. Um, so. As a sideline, I stayed in a Lenar home when I was at St. Marcos, California this year. And they were like, it was the best design home I have ever stayed in. It was just beautiful. Everything, every, everything that you'd want to have in your home, it was there. And I was like, oh, I live in an old house. So that's <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's California. Waiting for the age restricted. <laughs> Any other comments here in the room? Okay, we'll go out to the Zoom land over there. Anybody have any comments? Uh, I see you, Evelyn. There you are. Evelyn, you were first, if you'd like to begin. Hi, good evening, everybody. The, good presentation. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I have a question. I, I like the idea. I love this idea. More choice for um, me being over that certain age. And a lot of us actually have been looking and looking and looking to um, to move in. So we're we're anxiously awaiting uh, this new development. Um, question for you is: How much land is around each house? Are you it's like do you reach out and teach, touch the person's house next door? No. Yeah. I mean, I that's the question. How much land? Yeah, talking about. Just the age restricted section, or just the typical single families? No, the the in the age restricted section. Yeah, obviously, the condominiums are a condominium building, and the duplexes are two homes right next to each other. In the single family right. homes, I think our 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 average or our typical lot size is about sixty five hundred square feet. Now, that might not mean anything to you unless you're actually looking at a plan. So that's about. 60, 62 by 100. The homes are about 40 feet wide. So that leaves about 20 or so feet between homes. It is not large. They are not large lots. There's no, no getting around that. Uh, but that is what the buyer wants. They're not looking for a large yard. They're looking for a maintenance-free lifestyle. And uh, yes, the homes are relatively close. But these are the same single family homes in age restricted communities that Lenar builds uh, throughout New Jersey, uh, incredibly successful. And uh, we would welcome you uh, to, to contact me and we could get you a tour of any of our uh, New Jersey age restricted communities. And I hope you would find that they're well designed and the homes are in a good spot. Yes, I would love to do that. <laughs> Put me on your list. Yes, I don't know how we do that or arrange that, but. Yeah, I'm going to text. So, M Marissa, yeah. here's how we do it. Okay. You contact uh, Marissa at the town clerk's office, and she'll get you my Yes, yeah, she knows me. Okay. <laughs> she uh, she sure definitely you. knows who I am. Right. Yeah. Sounds okay, good. thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Evelyn. Dale? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I have a question that isn't about your mix or anything, but it is about the uh, age restricted community because you brought up the point about people potentially being snowbirds. Um, what is the arrangement for maintenance of the property if somebody has gone for several months? That, that's, a, that's exactly the key for the age restricted community is it's maintenance free. So whether you're living in a duplex or a single family home or of course a condo, the exterior yard area including your driveway, is maintained by the association. There will be actually a separate homeowner association just for the age restrictive section that will maintain their lawn and yard areas, that will maintain the streets that are not public, and that also will separately maintain the um, recreation center. Uh, so uh, it, it should be a, a wonderful maintenance-free lifestyle. That's great. So the, the rest of the communities have a different plan with under a different HOA because they're unlikely to be gone for extended periods of time? Correct. There'll be um, what we'll call a master homeowner association for the rest of the community. There will be sub-associations for the condominiums. 
There are condominiums in Upland Park, and there's condominiums in East Terrace, so they will have to have a separate sub-association, but there will be a master association for the rest of it, and that will take care of things like the stormwater basins, the private roads, as well as the recreation element that the board has, that the planning board had previously approved for the commons, which is a clubhouse, event center, sports fields, and all those typical family um, activities. Uh, so so it, should, it should work together really well. There, there'll be some limited cost sharing arrangements between the age restricted association <coughs> and the balance because there are some shared roads and some shared services, uh, but, but that would just be a separate agreement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dale. Anybody else uh, on Zoom has a comment? Doesn't look like it. Okay, with that, then we're going to hold the thank you guys for coming in, Mitch and the team. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. We're going to go ahead and hold the public comment uh, comments open until the next meeting. So if you have any, especially for those who listen to this on YouTube, um, we will be accepting comments up right up until the, I think our next meeting is the 13th. Yes. All right. So if you have written comments, please send them to you, Marissa. Right. And then we'll reconvene and we'll bring that back up again. November 13th. Correct. Thank you once again. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mr. everybody. Mr. Before we uh, adjourn for the night, I just just one procedural matter, please. Um, so tonight um, was a public hearing on the local law. Right? The local law is a remnant from the 1998 approvals that have carried through certain development restrictions on the project. Um, so the only change we're seeking to the local law that's carried out throughout the years is a reduction in the minimum number of duplex units. So that, that was the public hearing that was noticed and held this evening. I understand you'll carry it over. We would ask that your board also authorize the scheduling of a public hearing on the special permit and preliminary plan amendments itself for the November um, 11th meeting. Okay. Uh, 13. And um, I drafted a, uh, a resolution this afternoon for that, circulated it to the board and the town clerk. There is just one issue regarding um, the zoning code with respect to um, special use permits. So mm -hmm. under our code, the special use permit um, amendment would require um, that a notice be uh, posted on the property with the um, a brief statement on what the change is and what the time of the public hearing would be. Um, so um, the code talks about you know, posting one on the road um, in a spot that would be visible. Doesn't really contemplate, I think, the property this large. So um, there's some flexibility in the resolution. It just says that um, the applicant would be required to post the sign that's required. Um, and I guess there's um, my question would be, um, would the board be looking for more than one sign? Um, and if there would be you know, um, any additional signs that would be you know, needed outside of you know, the current entrances that's out there where they might go. I don't know if they post a sign that might get stolen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't think we would. I mean, I'm surprised that. So, does this require yet another public hearing for this particular change to that law? Um, no, 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 I'm just so. Uh, no, I'm just procedurally. I know what you just said, but based it, it, on what it, he it, said. It does. And if we need to post a sign of two or three, we okay. have to do it to comply. Uh, we don't need to change the signage requirement. Um, sorry? I don't recall posting a sign. In the past. We haven't done so for this project in the past. Yeah. So, I mean. So, yeah. I mean, and. I guess theoretically, if the board wishes, the board has the authority to waive the, the posting of the sign as well. So, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Steve, if you want to address scheduling the public hearing, it's on page six. If you just want to get the board one. So, public hearing on which matter? This is so there's two. two Procedural items that's before the board. That's what I was asking before. One is the local oh, law right. to amend the count of the single 
family. That's the public hearing that was scheduled for today. That's right. And then in conjunction with that is a more detailed special permit, which was, you know, multiple uh, 20 some odd page documents. Right. That's adopted. the amendment, correct? That, that was adopted yeah. in 2022. Okay. And there's some. All right. So we could set the public hearing for the 13th. Right. Okay. And, and then just for the record, we're going to we'll specifically waive the posting. Perfect. Okay. Good. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And just a foreshadow, we can first tonight, as I mentioned, Ashley, is the presentation of the special permit, right? Mm -hmm. So we're doing an abbreviated version for the public hearing in November, but you got you got the full picture tonight. Yeah, I see how it segues in. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Good night. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Yeah. Okay, on to agenda item number one, resolution to authorize J&G Law for a tax certiary proceeding. Um, this one here. So, I think five. page five, on page five. Oh, here we go. That's number four. Where is the exact... We don't have it. Okay, so this is this is actually we're engaging J and G to actually represent us against yeah, uh, in a tax search. We're not used to seeing that, so that's why I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, 14 Store Road is actually the Reggie Bar, isn't it? Okay, so um, the tax certiary proceedings have been commenced against the town of Tuxedo to contest the 2024-2025 assessment roll for 14 Store Road uh, owned by Susan Magnani at Al. Um, so I can make a motion um, to allow J and G to represent the town to defend the town in the above mentioned tax certiorari case. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next one resolution to schedule public hearing for the 2025 town budget. All right. Well, that's going to be also probably can be on. But should we do it on the 13th? It's November 6th. No, we're doing it on oh, November 6th. Okay, because we have tomorrow we have DADB um, workshop, right? And this would be going into preliminary right here. This this would be this would be going into preliminary budget mm -hmm. going to final. Okay. Right, so that's that's the right. we do all the work. Right. right. Okay, just to remind everybody, we do have a meeting tomorrow at what time, Rick? Seven. Seven o'clock if anybody wants to attend. Uh, public workshop. Everybody's invited to listen to us talk about uh, the DA and the DB fund is where we're up to now. So I'd like to make a motion uh, to set the public hearing for the 2025 town budget on Wednesday, November 6, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Agenda number three. Item number three, resolution to appoint full-time police officer. Oh, we're going to table that. Okay, I see that now. <clears throat> Number four, resolution to approve refurbishing town signs. So Rick, go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, you've been... I'll make a motion uh, to uh, refurbish town signs. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, so discussion matters. Um, we have uh, somebody that's going to do the signs. I forget what is her name. Mary Hanson. Mary Hanson. Yeah. Sorry, Mary. Slipped my mind. Uh, she's done this for about 20 years now, all the signs going into like Laurel Ridge, Clinton Woods, East Village, Eagle Valley. Uh, we have them all listed here in the agenda. Uh, so we'd like to make a motion for us to approve up to a thousand dollars for materials or refurbishing it. And that would be coming out of the A3310 fund. It's the um, traffic control fund. Any discussion on that? All for it. I'm all for it too, especially since the first one looks Great. More reasonable. It's uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five different signs that she has to lacquer, paint, and re, you know, refurbish. Refurbish. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 
All right. What do we have going? That's at the end of the items for on the agenda. What are we going for other business here? I see a lot of yellow here. <laughs> Another public hearing. Okay. All right, we just bumped it up. Okay. Budget modification. Budget mod. Okay, so uh, budget modification, I'd like to make a motion to the town board authorizes a budget transfer for a total of $150,000 from the general aid fund to a.7110.2. And Rick, you can go ahead and explain what that code is and what that change is. I guess second, I'll second it. And then discussion is, uh, this is associated with a grant that Deirdre and I have been working with, with Fred Brella, it's the Crest Grant for the uh, powerhouse park and putting in a playground set. Um, the Crest Grant is a matching uh, <clears throat> grant. So we we got, uh, Senator Scoofus gave us $125,000 for the playground set. We just now have to take the money, put it aside so that when it's time to do the work, we pay for it and we get the money back from the Crest Grant. So it's already been approved from the Senator. They went to DASNY. Now DASNY has to get this from us saying that we've uh, made a resolution. We give them our uh, quote and then we submit the paperwork. We have to have it in by the 30th and then everything will get transferred back to us. And then it comes springtime about we'll get the money. Well, we'll get the approval to start the project. We'll pay for it, submit all our bills and then we'll be reimbursed. It'll be put back into the fund. So we got to put it up first to get it. So that's what this is for. Can we budget for this for next year instead of modifying you could budget for it, but you'll lose your grant. So it's $125,000 that we're getting from the um, Senator Scoofus, and we have to have the paperwork in by October 30th. What paperwork is that? Just the resolution? It's the DASNY paperwork? The, yeah, it's yeah. just the paperwork. It's the resolution. The it's, we, have, we already got the quote for the $150,000. There's a letter that DASNY requires that shows okay. our bank accounts, that shows, you know, in good faith, we're going to perform the work in a timely manner. And some other things that uh, the declaration from the, the town supervisor stating the work will be done, and you know, okay. by a certain time. And we have to commit the funds up front. We have the funds in the A to yes, yes. But so we have to commit it um, in order for them to register the fact that we'll get it. We can't. Right. We um, can't. Yeah, budget. So I get that. So from an accounting point of view, what, what would essentially <laughs> happen was if you make this budget amendment, you would earmark the funds because the funds is likely going to be spent next year, not this year. We're committing the funds this year Correct. for the budget for work to be done in summer of 25. Right. So what would happen is you would earmark the 2020 budget. Those funds would continue into next year's budget. Um, so it, it's technically not going to be budgeted next year to come out of 20. 2024 it's, funds. It's a committed fund from 2024. Correct. Which rolls into 2025 to be paid. To be paid. Uh, and then we after you pay it, it will be reimbursed. Yeah. And I think technically the money coming back in, you may want to talk to the bookkeeper about the reimbursement. I would think the reimbursement money will actually come in in 2025. Rather it comes no, 30, it's, 30 he said within 30 days. days of us signing the paper. Yeah. We already oh, okay. sat down with the accountants yeah. and okay. yeah. with Fred and everybody. And Once we complete the project, we as long as all the paperwork is, is complete, which it is. Well, it will be once we do this yeah. resolution. Um, then we will get paid back 30 days after the completion of the project. Correct. We Once we the submit the bills and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. So, and so, so the, But the reimbursement will, will happen in 2025. Correct. Yeah. To yeah. the general aid fund. So the reimbursement will go back to the A fund. Right. I'm tracking all that. What I'm not tracking is what specifically we're spending $102,000 on. We have $125,000 we're spending on a playground set for Powerhouse Park. I got it. Have I seen that? Have you seen it? Is there a plan? Uh, well, yeah. that's what I'm asking. We got there well, is a plan. the master plan that we had the engineer that we paid the $5,000 for. Yeah. You so, haven't seen it? No. I just in our office. It's okay. I'll send it to you. I think in the end we're not. Uh, first of all, I just I just uh, don't want to spend one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars on and agree to it that on something significant well, for use of town. 
that I've never seen. Yeah, no, I can, I'll send it to you. Uh, $125,000 for a play set's a little pricey, by the way. So is there some other work that's figured in? Hence, that's well, why I'd like to okay, see it. So, so you have to understand, it's not just, not just the play set. You have to um, treat the land. Mm -hmm. You have to evac, you have to clean it out. You have to level it. And there's all kinds of um, materials that are required for play sets. I think $35,000 of it is for the material that goes on mm -hmm. on the ground. Um, and it's all detailed in the quote. The okay. And honestly, $125,000 is not that much. Uh, the no, size I'm, of what we're looking at, the first one we were looking at was over $250,000. I'm working in a so we downsized project in, in Rockland County, and it's two hundred and twenty. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay. I, uh, and I understand. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I trust I'll you guys. No, no, no. I, 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 but, no but, but, I quite well take it. But there's no, people no. listening saying, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah, no. You know, $150,000 for a place swing set? I just want to make sure I know because I'm actually, voting for it's a, everybody it's, understands. It's, it's a play set for two different age groups from right. two to seven. I'm sure I guess I'm, I'm thinking about a slide in a swing set. <laughs> As, no, uh, it's not. For it's a playground. Thank you, Chris, I, I, for asking. I can make sure that I've been to other parks. Uh, I just. Yeah, I get it. Go to this, you know, Your comment you know, is totally. The high school is going to look something like the high school playground, but on a smaller scale. That one was much more than one hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay. All right. Cool. Every, all in favor? Aye. 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 Second resolution is what Rick just said. This is the second part of that. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the cost of up to 150000 to use towards purchasing playground equipment for Howard pa Powerhouse Park to be reimbursed by the Crest Grant. Do I have a second? second. Any further discussion? Just so we're all on the same page. We're all good, right? Yep. yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town board updates. We'll start with you, uh, Chris Stolpaum. Uh, continuing to work on some things with the town code, town sign or uh, political signs will be added to the agenda to discuss. No, I want to be part of that discussion. That's fine. Um, and that's that's all I'm working on right now. I just a quick comment on that. <laughs> I think political parties or nominees should be making a business case to change any political signs. Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to look at what the code. That. I want to look at what the code. If is. nobody's complaining is running for office, then mm -hmm. I don't think we should be spending time talking about it. That's fair. I mean, um, I emailed you the section of the code. That yeah, I just kind of want to look at what the code is. I, I mean, so. I know that generally speaking, um, I feel like the pulse of the town is. They don't really like seeing the political signs every year or every four years or every two years. I don't think we need to see them longer. So with respect to political signs, there's been a lot of litigation um, and the typical litigation comes out of judges who are running for office. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. <laughs> but, uh, oh, God, but anyway, so there's a lot of cases on First Amendment grounds. The most recent case is regarding the time. Could you use a microphone, please? She is very... It's on. Can't hear him. So the um, one That's of the more recent thinking. cases dealt with um, the timing of when signs could um, could a municipality restrict uh, the timing of the signs with respect to the election calendar, and um, the the issue there was um, specifically that. Um, the signs um, have to be permitted between primary day and general election day. So, because that's one of the... Yeah, that's way too Five months. But again, that's what the case law says. So, and these are federal, for the most part, federal law, federal, law, federal court cases based on First Amendment grounds. So... It be like the... I mean... <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I would like to challenge that. I mean, so I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll send the board the case law. I mean, if we were to actually do something where we uh, in hand created a code October 1st to election day, get them out of there within a week. I mean, yeah, so that's, that's pretty standard. That's Here sort of we are weird. talking about something nobody's complaining about. Right. right. We're right. Time. We just move on. We're just looking. We got some comments that brought it up. So it piqued an interest in me. I, I'd never even thought of that before. I just know as a courtesy, I put my signs up as late as possible and took them down right away. 
So I know there's other people that don't do that. So, uh, and by the way, uh, if you do what uh, the building inspector in Slotesburg did, he just loaded them in the back of his pickup truck <laughs> and forced them to keep putting new ones up if they didn't comply. So that could be challenging. Cool <clears throat> right? Okay. Uh, Chris Cassidy, you have anything else? I do not. Okay. Rick Marsh. I don't have anything other than I hope everybody has noticed the new beautiful sign entering in the town of Tuxedo in uh, Slosburg area. Mm -hmm. uh, it came out great. John Ruel uh, did the work for us, and we're looking at replacing the other main signs that, you know, budget-wise, we'll get them done, too. So I think it came out phenomenal. It was well needed and overdue. Definitely looks good. Um, Deirdre. So we um, submitted the New York Forward application on Friday, and uh, that is now being considered. We should be getting an answer as to whether we're in the final round uh, within the next couple of months. Um, it actually is, um, it, it's, it's rather competitive. We're in the Mid-Hudson region, which means that involves Rockland, Orange, Westchester, Dutchess, <coughs> Putnam, and Ulster. So my understanding from Skoufis's office is we're the only we're the only municipality within his district that has applied for the New York Forward. The um, we did also receive a certification as a pro housing community, um, which is critical for all New York State grants going forward. It's a requirement of Senator of uh, Governor Hochul's office. And many um, municipalities um, didn't participate because of confusion over the, the pro-housing. So we were able to do that because of Tuxedo Reserve. And we actually uh, fought them on a lot of the resolutions they, they asked us to, to do. But they did uh, certify us. So we are now registered as a certified community for pro-housing, which is... That came today, yeah. Yeah, really good. That opens us up to over $600 million of funding. Correct. Right. Correct, which we would not be able to do without that. So that was a major big deal, and we didn't have to do a resolution binding us to, which they claim is not binding, but, you know, things can change. Um, so we'll see. Thank you so much for all your hard work on that, Deirdre. I know I kept you up nights trying to get things all straightened out to make that deadline. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. I'm sure I'm speaking for the entire board. I don't have anything at this time, so we'll go on to approve the minutes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for the regular bi-monthly town board meeting held on October 9, 2024. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then vouchers. I can make a motion to approve the following vouchers have been ordered by the town board nearby approved on the, make a motion for approval. Claim numbers last four three eight six zero through three nine one four for a total amount of one hundred forty five thousand ten dollars and fifty four cents. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Public comments, not pertaining to the agenda, just general. Anybody in the room? I think we've covered a lot of subject matter today. How about out on Zoom? Evelyn? Yes. Uh, Irene, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'd like to follow up on the uh, building at Tiki Field. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was made clear the last time I spoke about this building that uh, a tree fell on the roof, and that's why the roof was damaged. So whether it's a new building or an old building, there would have been damage sustained from the tree falling. And currently the tarp on the roof is not secure any longer. So if we end up getting some rain, which I hope we do, there's gonna be further damage to that building. Um, and Mr. Marsh had said that the insurance company deems the building unfixable, unsavageable. I'd like to know where we stand with the insurance company and what is gonna be done in place of that building and with that money. Now that building was not just only a concession stand, 
it's also a storage unit. And uh, two years ago, that building was used uh, for uh, Laurel Ridge Community Day. And the building looked fine to me. It still looks fine to me, except for the roof. But whatever the insurance company decides, I guess that's what it is. Also, this morning, I was down at Teachy Field again, and it looks like another tree fell on the red tall building. So there is damage there also. Doesn't look like the roof, but there's damage to that building. And with all that said, these three buildings have been neglected at Tiki Field for a long time. They need to be maintained. And it's a shame. The only thing that's been done to Tiki Field was when the tennis court and the basketball court was updated. And there's a pickleball court now. People use that field and that park more so now since it's been updated. So I would like it to continue to be updated and maintained. I think it's important as a town that we take care of what we have and maintain it. I think that's fiscally responsible. Irene, we're working on replacing the backboards there for the basketball court. They, uh, we have several complaints from the community up there that it's inefficient. And with the Cheney grant that Deirdre secured, we're looking at, uh, we got two quotes as of right now. We're looking to go out for a third quote, but the basketball court will have new backboards there soon. Um, Kathleen and the rec board is working on that. As opposed to the buildings, Chris, do you have any information on that with the insurance or anything? I, I mean, I know that the insurance claim was settled. That's a matter of what's going to happen with the buildings. What, what's the plan? on what we're going to do with it. And that's recreation. So yeah, we'll discuss that. And uh, the news about a new tree hitting the building, we'll have Rob check it out tomorrow and call the insurance and yeah. see if they come. Uh, yeah, it's it's the out. tall red building. Yeah, the, the, the press box or the yes. score box. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for letting us know that. We'll have uh, Rob, <clears throat> excuse me, Rob and his guys or somebody call the insurance company and get Rob up there and we'll, we'll investigate that. Again, I would like that park and field to be maintained because people do use it. And the homes in Laurel Ridge have been selling at a high price the last few years. And we deserve a, a nice looking park that's functional. We are trying. We're putting approximately $1,500 to $2,000 just for basketball hoops up. Yeah, I mean, so we are maintaining it. The grass is being cut and done. stuff. It's not being totally neglected. Yeah. It's maintained by the highway department. It's, I mean, the playground is relatively new. The tennis court is relatively new. The, the chain link is, fence is falling apart. And there's holes in it. Okay, we'll have uh, Rob take an inventory uh, this week and uh, we'll get back to you on progress. Okay, Irene? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Comments? Okay, at this time, I would like to make a motion to enter into executive session. Oh, sorry. Evelyn, do you have something else? No, no, that's okay. You you said something, and I... Anyway, I, I was interested in this last um, comment about the building by Laurel Ridge for Laurel Ridge. Okay. I don't know exactly where those buildings are, but... Um, Sounds like it's worth we're, we're gonna investigating it you're back. doing it. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. You're, you're Have a good welcome. one. You too. I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter at 812. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, will we we'll be taking action? Mary, if we take action, I'll phone you. Thank you. Landline, please. Uh, Mary Gretzer, if you can hear me, we are not taking any action. I'd like to make a motion 
to adjourn executive session at 9.16 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion at 9.16 p.m. to also adjourn the regular bi-monthly meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good evening.